Okay, okay. Because okay. my okay. I don't know why my OBS OBS cannot do Okay, okay. Since uh since Darren already done it. So So we do both lah. I do half first, so then you he... just whatever you are studying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then after that, uh, then okay, you just all. then you just present <laughs> your your uh financial result and see whether uh learning learning technology okay. is worth investing okay. Okay, okay. okay. Anyway, ah, uh, you go first, sir. Okay, okay. So uh, hey, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so Hengan International Group, ah, uh, what do they do? Uh, ba- basically the wait, let me see. Okay, this is the basic information of the company. Market cap at uh sixty five point six one billion uh Hong Kong dollar. P ratio fifteen. Uh, what they deal with is fast moving family consumer products. Uh, number of employee more than thirty thousand. Last price uh trading at fifty five Hong Kong dollars. My investment thesis. Uh, potentially a leading Nestle of future currently undergoing interna- internationalization scaling and is still in double digit sales growth. Business model. Uh, yeah. So these are all the. Is it clear or not, my screen? Can you? Do I, need... I mean, can yeah. you it create a full screen? Uh? Full screen. Uh? Yeah. See? Yes, that one. Okay. Can see? Yeah, okay. See. Okay. So it's okay. a baby diapers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everything. Uh, including. Uh, these are these are the categories of uh hygiene related product. So that's how they name it, a uh, hygiene related product. Then. <clears throat> uh, later I show you the breakdown. Uh. basically, there's tissue paper product, there's sanitary napkin, there's disposable diaper product, and then there's uh small amount of other product. So these are the uh, breakdown of their <clears throat> revenue. Largest amount is actually from tissue paper product, which is close to 50%, which is almost half of it. Uh. <clears throat> Second largest uh, segment is the sanitary napkin product. Then the, the third largest is, uh, is it will change, it changes between the disposable type of product and other smaller amount of product. So uh, they are mainly uh, HQ in China and the whole of China, you, if you look at the uh, color coding, uh, the largest amount of revenue comes from uh, Fujian and Jiangxi, which is this, this part. Right, and then the second largest comes from uh, Guangdong and Guangxi, which is a place I'll be flying to this Sunday. Uh, and I'll be spending the next one whole week there. <laughs> so I think I will do a bit of um, uh, what do you call that? Touch, touch the brick. Yeah, touch the brick there. And then, uh, so this, this is the representation of the whole country. Now, what is interesting about uh, this company is that they just started penetrating into Southeast Asia and European market, so including Malaysia. Uh, they acquired Wang Zheng Bahad, a listed company in Busa, and expanded distribution channels to Southeast Asia for diapers and mini wet wipes. They invested in this uh, fin pulp oil, a wood pulp manufacturer in Finland, and set foot in the upstream industry. So this wood pulp uh, raw material is a very crucial raw material for the uh, tissue paper product. Uh, they set up manufacturing. They just set up a manufacturing base in Russia to pave way for expansion into European market. Oh, so fast. Okay, huh? Three minutes for whole company. Huh? Expanded to. Uh, sorry. Okay, expanded to e-commerce omni-channel sales, which contributed 14% of group revenue. And then they acquired entire uh, Sunway Cordis Holding Limited uh, and its subsidiaries to engage in manufacturing of food wrap film, plastic bags in China, and are sold, which are sold locally and exported to Europe, Australia, North America, and Asia. So what is uh, interesting is about this company in terms of past uh, successful strategy is that they've constantly been uh, aim, 
aiming at exploring better ways to make customers' life better by creating and developing new tech and professional alliances to enable product innovation. And then they adopt this thing called Hengan Amoeba model by deepening the small sales team operating model to gain in-depth consumer feed behavior. So there are many, many small sales team. Uh, and they are currently scaling internationally, starting from Southeast Asia and Europe. Uh, the sweet spot is that it's still at its uh, fairly early growth phase, uh, even though it was founded in 1985, but listed in 1998. So, uh, and it's even, even after 20 plus year, right now it's still growing at double digit phase and it's just starting to scale. Uh, do you think the business can double in the next three or five years? Uh, hygiene product is a necessity of life. It can, if it can continue to manage the cost of raw material and demand, it will always be there. Apart from that, uh, they need to manage price war and other competitors and also constant innovation to stay relevant to consumer preferences behavior. Apart from that, the growth driver is because of penetration through Southeast Asia and European market. Uh, of course, it needs to manage the uh, end to end manufacturing vertically integrated process, which means uh, whatever, you know, like uh, raw material that they find there's fluctuation of prices, they need to be able to uh, build you know, both ways downstream and upstream to, to be in better control for the internationalization scaling strategy. Yeah. Toxic factor, brick and mortar business is affected by e-commerce. What they've done is they penetrated into e-commerce as well. And continuous uh, acquisition on entities that add value to production change to reduce cost of production. Product, product innovation, variety to reduce the impact of fluctuating raw material costs. Uh, industry highlight the I have a number of uh, companies at my hand, which I just found for comparison. But uh, eh, wait, uh, in in terms of the risk factor in the next few fires is forex volatility because the raw material they purchase is from overseas, U.S. China trade friction and also fluctuation of raw uh, materials. Uh. Um, this one is a, a high level analysis. So the green color. Uh, patch is the Hangar International's representation. It's high profitability, raw risk, uh, the valuation and high growth plan, we need to look into the finances. Lah. So, okay, that's, that's all from me for the industrial overview and business model for this part uh, as of now. Okay. Uh, Hongkai. Hongkai is not... Hongkai is not different company. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so so how uh, you wanna just look into other companies' financial or I think we, we, I think we just do a QA first. Oh, okay. Yeah, Q &A first. oh okay. Yeah, Q &A. All right. <laughs> we'll take QA on this and then move on to the next one. Okay. I think my QA oh. is very, it's very simple. Uh. Since you say uh yeah, it will be the leading product uh for this uh fast fast moving consumer group because for currently, right, fast moving consumer goods, the giant, uh, like in baby diapers or napkin, right? Mostly are uh, this company, PG, Johnson and Johnson, Unicam, Unicham, Unilever. All these are all these are trading, I mean for the market market, uh, market capitalization, uh, all these are trading at hundred billion USD allowed. For your company currently is uh I, I convert to US dollar. Uh, your company currently is eight, 8 billion US dollar. I mean, yeah, if 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 they come, if they if it can go to Johnson and Johnson, of course the eight billion to hundred billion is a, is is a huge potential, right? But how do you think the branding power for this company? I mean, is then can they really penetrate so well compared to the others for that? Uh, my opinion is this, <clears throat> because a lot of these other companies, uh, they are foreign brand. And that uh, Chinese culture is uh, there is a nationalistic component to it. Uh, when the what do you call that uh, the Huawei and also the uh, the Huawei issue pop up right uh, with US right. Uh, oh, the the nationalistic uh, spirit came out, and that uh, the country will always even the consumer always, you know, support uh, local product first and that its base is in China. The fact that uh, uh, there's a lot more areas in China that uh, has a uh, lower level of hygiene awareness, right? And that uh, the local company understands the local consumer behavior a lot better. 
in and in terms of distribution channel is also a lot better. So even with the growth potential within China is already massive. So my opinion. It's, it has still very very good growth potential within China, not to mention about uh the rest of the the world, yeah. And then actually my second question is, the product is this all these are on brand right? They are not doing like, uh pirate label or white label. I mean, on brand. Do, correct. Do they do they manufacture their own goods or they only they on manu- the brand? They manufacture their own goods. So they even uh even you know constantly. Like the next one is they build their manufacturing plant in Russia to pave way for even more, uh, sales into European countries, lah. Their their strategy has always been to manufacture their own goods. Okay, okay. The last one is my comment only because uh, based on the variation, ah, mm. is is I mean, not not speaking from the gross prospectus, ah, the actually the variation is. Trading under all the all the big giant. Uh. If you if the investment thesis from you is so called correct, right? I mean, then this company is undervalued. Other than that, okay, I I okay, I I I don't have other any. Pass to other my question. Okay. Um. Um. Darren, would like to know. Uh. Uh. If you manage to find out, like, uh, how do they? Well, probably Adrian has this. Well, how do they compete with the other brand? Like, what is the advantage of this uh, their product as compared to other brand? Is that uh, are they giving a much better value proposition than the other brand? Simply cheaper, or you know, what are their age? Mm. So in in other countries, uh, I cannot say for sure. I've mm. read. Uh, what I've uh, gathered is that they do have competition in terms of branding. Mm. Uh, and also they are spending quite a bit. Uh, to strengthen their their branding as well. Mm. But uh, if you know, if I look at it from an angle. Uh, whether they have a mode against foreign brand. Uh, I feel that. Uh, this is where the the culture, and the penetration, uh, in that technical know how comes into the picture for their unique advantage, lah. But if you were to say, let's say, uh, within, so the other Chinese company that potentially will be, hmm. their competitor is uh this company called, uh, Java. Let me. You still can. Yeah. So this is. This is the other the other company that uh is non Chinese. Eh, sorry, it's Chinese compared to the rest of the companies that are non Chinese. Right. And if they were to fight China Chinese product with Chinese product, then uh I'm not sure lah. Yeah, then I'm not sure. I need to go there and experience mm. it myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Are we shooting the timer? Ah? Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. One so last question. No more. Okay. Uh, okay. My turn. My turn. Finish your time. Okay. I see my screen. Yes. Okay. First of all, just some brief. What is learning technology group is? Okay. Uh, look at this thing back here. It's a digital transformation company. Uh, okay, a bit hard to explain, but this is actually this nine was part of their company, which they help the big company or other small company to maintain their talent management and digitalize uh, their workforce. Okay, maybe I go through a simple example, so maybe you all can get more understanding about it. Okay, example. Okay, they actually give us an example. Okay, Visa is one of their client. Okay, so the challenge is, uh, simply uh, in the base of industry disruption and ambitious business strategy, Visa learning development team needed a framework for understanding how they support overall business and improve alignment of this goal. And they wanted to shift their L and D from a compliance driven to a learner driven function. So multiple learning tools, including the learning management system and the learning experience platform, they struggle with no single platform for training and consistent reporting. So after uh, this LTG group, when they see all this kind of uh, problem, then they will step in. Of course, it's something outsourced. Uh, so we start hire them to do some solution with it. So 
Okay. Uh, we start anything as well we start UCT, a physical learning hub and the next generation digital learning ecosystem powered by this one, uh, something system that operating. Uh. So basically for LTG group, right? Uh, they are like helping a company to solve the internal problem. So to make their workforce become smarter and easier in terms of learning or in terms of the compensation framework or this kind of thing. So they are helping the internal problem of a company. Okay. So simply that's true. This company a bit is a management owned company. Uh major holder is the CEO and the chairman. Okay. So this is a list of the subsidiaries of the group, they have a lot of company, all hundred percent holding. Okay, recently last year in 2018, they have a huge jump in the revenue uh, because of a acquisition of one company called People Fluent in the US. Okay, we're going through again. Okay, shareholding. Okay, nicely just now. Uh, Andrew is the chairman, Jonathan is the CEO, two of them hold about 30% of the share in the company. So they are actually the owner. Uh, last time, both of them bought over a company called Epic, then after that, they transfer it. Uh, to LPG. Okay. Uh, insider trading. Uh, Leslie, one of the non executive director and remuneration community, recently buy something. Quite a lot, uh, not something. Uh. Basically, all their management is buying uh, compared to selling. The major management is buying the share himself, insider trading. Okay. So, Andrew, the non executive chairman. Uh, the education, qualification, all no issue. Okay, uh, someone found it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, in this red, red column, uh, Jonathan, he got a military digital director in Epic. Epic is, it was a previous company in 2007. Then following, he purchased the company with uh, Andrew, which is the chairman just now. And together, they changed from uh, they lead Epic and changed to in uh, LTG afterwards. Okay, skip. Uh, CFO, also I just got insider trading, buying the share. Okay, you can see the number. Domination strategy. Okay, numbers, uh, I have quite limited data because I don't have full focus data. And I also very highly find the data from Melissa also. So, uh, I will say here it's about 70%, 80% accurate. Okay, uh, second point. For the five years data for revenue, 44%, EBIT 51%, net profit 50%, earning per share about 41%. Okay, uh, some funding data from the uh, from the financial. Okay, that increased to generate into total execution. Uh, people who work so of it, which puts their business into the S market and the uh, watershed market, uh, watershed, another company, they purchased the remaining 72% from the company. So increase in carry packs, intangible asset, also same reason. Uh, including the net tangible asset, uh, quite huge decrease uh, from negative A to negative zero, zero goodwill and tangible asset. Uh, however, they are not only borrowing the money, and also they issue quite a lot of share to fund for acquisition. So you can see the share volume from three hundred forty-eight million becomes three hundred fifty million in just five years. Okay. Uh, good thing about this company is the revenue sixty percent revenue is come from recurring revenue, which is including the software. Because they will tend to supply all this soil to company, so they use some like e-learning platform, so they recurring revenue from the company. And the remaining 40% or the remaining 30% all come from new businesses, uh, which is something not recurring. 60% will come from recurring. Uh, some of the other data from this is something that I can get from morning star. You can have a look. Okay, done. Any questions? Um... I don't know. I laugh, I laugh. <laughs> yes, I agent. I what is your question? I laugh because I after he presented, right, I still have no clue what is the business model. Yeah, I also have no clue <laughs> what is the business doing about. Is it a payment? Is it a sir? Okay, no. Uh it's like okay, let's say today Daniel and your company have issue yeah. with the uh, your employee. Alright. So you actually need to help need your people to learn something. But you don't have a platform for them to uh, learn. 
So I will e-learning. Uh, e-learning, e okay, e-learning. Okay. So I will give you all this kind of software. I have to I have to implement. I have to build software anything. So I give it to you. So I get a recurring revenue revenue from there. I mean, who is the? Uh, I mean, the, hmm. the so called the e learning provider. I mean, the contact is the is the contact of the e learning belong to the to the group. Ah. You mean the content of the e learning ah. belong to the? Okay, basically, it's like they will find uh okay. Let's say like Visa just now. So they will find LTG to build a platform for them to use because. Uh, some of the company they doesn't need to hire a team just to develop a platform like right? just for uh, HR purposes, e-learning or doing some uh teaching training. So they are also this to LDG. So LDG will solve all this for for them. So they get a new revenue from there and also recurring revenue from there. Can I understand? Cannot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, it's actually making money one, right? Not lost my making money. Ah, uh, making money. And then, other than Visa, what other customers does it have? Ah. Uh, uh, I see. Uh, car also got. I forgot Honda or Ford already. Quite some number of a uh, famous company. Okay. I need to reach back. I gone through a bit uh, They have a, uh, a number of uh, so called big client with them. The visa one is just like just not temporary. Okay. I just then, go uh, when was it? Uh? Sorry, I can't get you. When was it listed? He was asking. I think one three or one four. Let me say one four. So one four. Ah, recently only, just like five years ago. Six years ago. Okay. Um, mm. Because the software I saw, like mm. real learning, Ukera and P Rotted. Then platform is called more routine software, people fluent watershed, affirmative if I talk with MS, BG, HR, and instill. This one, this one. Yeah. Actually, each of the company represents mm. different. When is it listed? Uh? 214. 214. And how's the share price like? Uh? Okay. Can you show me the chart? Uh? The pattern not bad one. Quite nice. I uh. got retracement. No one. To I mean, one three. <laughs> this kind of company, like, no. Like, no one. Uh, I think Solid also can go listing. Uh. Wow. Very incredible. Yeah, like <laughs> this, this is why I. Like no no it. backbone uh, also can ah, go listing ah. Uh. Ah. Mm -hmm. And then so green. I, I, I studied the, a little bit of uh, in terms of the management capital allocation uh, All the while they keep on acquire acquire only one. Uh. Yeah, that's the only thing they can do. It so means it's a M and A game lah. Uh. Yeah. M and A scale worldwide. Like uh recently they take people fluent because of US market. So their revenue boost from about 50 to 90, double up. Won't be another pharmaceutical company, right? The M&A, &A, M &A, M &A, until the balance sheet burst. Possible. Anyway. Well, it went up to, it went up to almost 200 and then it dropped back down, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maximum here, one. So, so D Y O D D la? Huh? D Y O D D. Okay. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> okay, wait, wait. So for both company, which one we go further before that? I will opt for Darren one. Uh, hey, I don't right. care. Right? Mm. I think if of, of course two, if between these two, of course the Terra is better. La. Hmm, business model seems better. So I will just shift over there. Okay. This one maybe put KIV first. Okay. Okay. 
Anyway, I'm flying. I'm flying there so I can go and do some touching the brick. Good. All right. Okay. Next. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 So next one, who? Or is it me? Anything. Anyone. Okay. And I'll do it then. Do, 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 do. All right. So what's this is about? This is a metal Toledo company. So what's this company about is uh, uh, manufacturing precision in, uh, instruments like uh, metal detector, like uh, load cells, you know, those trucks uh, uh, you're running across. <clears throat> so in short, this company uh, from how it looks like in terms of revenue growth and uh, uh, in terms of all those uh, margin, it would fit more onto the build to last kind of company. Uh, it's a pretty huge company. That's about 17.66 billion. Uh, PE is about 34 and it's quite steady. Um, number of employees is already 16,000. So it's a big company and uh, uh, worldwide already. So <clears throat> um, what is it doing about? Uh, it's serving uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies, serving food and beverage, uh, life science, laboratory, um, industrial and consumers uh, retails this three and of course coming with uh, uh, what you call service uh, what you call customer service uh? okay manufacturing facility in these areas um, then uh, it boasts about a manufacturer to feel because uh, when you need only the manufacturer because they have a short uh, manufacturing lead time as compared to required delivery time so they are yeah, they got some buffer. This is their uh, overview of their business. It serves R and D. Uh, these are their products. Okay, some you will see all these things uh, back in your uni or secondary school time. Uh, yeah, laboratory stuff, and these are more industrial. Um, metal detector, um, weighing weighing system like that. Okay, so what's so unique about this thing? Well, my company actually use uh, use uh, this uh, product before um, and still using. So for example, metal detector, this is quite a critical part. Why? Imagine you're having, having a process and that process is pretty sensitive to this metal piece. You know, metal, knock with metal, the softer one would just go break. And you don't want, you don't want, you don't want your equipment to go break because some metal accidentally gets inside. That's where the metal detector comes in, and it is a. Uh, it's not that expensive as compared to a whole process line, but it's super important. So this is where it starts to build value for the customer that they don't mind paying for the premium. Okay, this is one of it. Not every one, but well, that one at least that I see. Um, these are presents. So the big part they they are facing some boom now is on the laboratory side. So because of the capital, uh, what you call capital inflow in terms of pharmaceutical side, they have more uh, research and development, and these are their products. Say, these are their range of products. It's all cropped from website. Uh, industrial instruments. Um, these are weighing systems. Uh, weighing systems, for train, and these are metal detectors. Uh, these are for retails. I pretty much this uh, you are quite familiar before. You can even see in Tesco or Tesco, you know, put your fruits over there and wait. All right. So, so, so yeah, they are they are quite big. They are sort of like built to last kind of companies, and uh, moving forwards, they will just continue to gain more market shares. And these are some of the details that I copy from the revenue. Uh, Annual reports, uh, how they want to increase their their sales, how and how they want to penetrate more markets uh, using software, using IT. Um, I haven't see anything too unique. It's just like uh, uh, things that a big company can afford to do. Yeah, uh, these are some of their programs that they use to improve their manufacturing lines uh, efficiencies. Uh, yeah. Um, one special thing is that you know everyone is going up from UK. They are the one that expand. 
and stay inside. So it's a, a counterintuitive dish. Um, other than that, other than that, nothing much. This is a CEO guy. Apparently, there was a short report on this company. That's why you see a a uh, fall in the share price. And that shorting is not over yet. It's estimated to fall another 50%, 30 to 50%. So uh, I just found the report. I will look into that. Um, next one, why would you have a sh short showing is this. These are their numbers. I must say that their numbers look pretty well. Um, that's why the short reports is out because the number looks a bit too well. Well, a bit too beautiful. So margins continue to expand and uh, revenue just continue to climb up, right? So you have some depths over here, which is uh, used to for acquisitions. I do not have the detail yet, but yeah, we'll have. Cash conversion cycle continues to be steady, all right? And yep, even the return of equity, all those are high. Return equity are high because of the share buybacks, but uh, other than that, um, need to look further. Okay, so so what's the what's the big takeout from here? Is that uh, let me think. I think one more thing that I need to show you guys. <laughs> this one. And look at this figure. And this figure. One is for PPE, which is the, the assets. Uh, their PPE are continuing expanding. But if you look at the pro gross profit over total assets, right? Uh, still maintaining. So they are not actually losing our profitability over the years. They are expanding and they are still maintaining it. And this is sort of indication that I think that uh, is showing is strength of the of the company brand. Yep. So this is what I've gathered so far. Any questions? <clears throat> I think I may need you to want go me to back. ask, uh, Daniel? Yep. Why you want to study this company? Uh? Um, that's because my company came across before, and uh, um, uh, well. Uh, on the metal detector part, that's the part that uh, there's a very strong value adding. And yeah, that's why I sort of uh, actually looking into this company. This this metal detector that you say, uh, mm. is it very complex? It's not so complex, actually. But uh, you buy these things because of the reliability. Yeah. But does it mean other companies cannot do it? They are competitors. Okay. If you're asking about the uniqueness of this company as compared to the others, um, truthfully speaking, I haven't known that much yet. But it's just okay. that from the from the figure itself, it does look like it's sustaining. It's either the figure is too fake or they are really that good. Okay. Hmm. Any other question? No. no, not for me. I think I also in digestion. <clears throat> okay, so uh, next company. I'm my, I'll uh, be keeping this company. I mean, my opinion is I feel like this kind of company very difficult to scale. Like, the the consume the targeted buyer are like very very niche and not a lot in the world. Right? I mean, compared compared to other businesses, uh. mm. 
Mm. Not necessary. I mean, uh, they can target industrials and I mean, uh, you would need industries, right? Uh, those processing plants and uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're... I mean, enough for them to make profit and to sustain and to stay alive. But if you are to compare to you know, uh, massive scale, for example, like uh, double up kind of thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like you know, really massive, massive growth. I mean, this kind of company, I imagine, right, is almost like um, suddenly I think of the helmet company that uh, Jackson introduced from Japan. Like one. Koi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like there's the limited, limited potential of growth to how scalable it can be. And it gives me this kind of feeling. Well, one thing I can say is that... Uh... The, their kind of uh, products are still continually necessary. The only thing about uh, this <laughs> is the potential of how much it can scale, whether it can really double up the revenue in coming coming few years, which I don't think so. These are the company that is built to last. It will continue to sustain itself uh, reasonably. But if you talk about bombastic growth, no, it's really past the stage. Mm. Now it's more into falling a lot uh, falling in line with the overall market growth and slightly better than it that would be the best they can do already yeah mm, okay okay next company okay. it's supposed to be our turn um no keep the keep keep that one uh, last first we do oh. it last lah. I have a lot of questions also. Or oh, not the best for the last one. Because that one I also I also also got Where's the, the money start team? I think I think maybe I share mine first because mine is also quick and fast one. Uh, uh let me share let me share it. Dumb one. <laughs> not okay. can dumb, not can dumb, but but not not uh not your type of not your kind of cup okay uh then how to switch you know? uh okay 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 so everyone can see my screen uh, uh yes <laughs> okay okay this one is it's this company is uh from us royal Car caribbean limited uh it's 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 in the I mean uh if you ask me why I choose this it's based on the community list. Okay. okay. The community is actually currently uh training at hey, wait, wait, wait. Where's the screen? I cannot see it. Yes, yes, I also cannot see the screen. Um nothing can see. Wait, Adrian, can't see now. Okay. I don't register screen. Uh, okay. I, I swear I can now it's hold on. Now it's back and gone. I share again. <clears throat> okay. Can see. Mm. Can. Ah uh, yes, now can see. Oh okay. Oh, okay. come Lang and Meng. <laughs> okay. 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 This this company actually is based on the US list in the in the SL suite. And then secondly, because uh recently I also looking for cruise. I mean in terms of holiday. Yeah. Uh okay. <laughs> This one, it's a company is actually in a large, large cap, 22 billion already. Um, I mean, large cap as in this industry and not the, not compared to other industry. Okay. Okay. If you want to know what is a, what's the cost look, look like, this one, these are all the sample from this, from the company. Actually, this company offer, uh, the la one of the most luxury cruise experience. Okay. 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 The second, I go fast. Uh, this company is a world second largest cruise. The first one is the first one is Carnival. Then this this company operate total of almost fifty ships in uh, in the company, and this fifty ships actually go, go for five hundred and forty destination one. Okay, then this one is the the if you see the right hand side is the capacity of the all the ships they have lah. Okay, then the the business model actually revenue model is the 
of course, of course it's very really easy. Seventy one percent is from passenger ticket. Then other then the rest almost thirty percent is from the on board, meaning on board food ah, uh, entertainment ah, uh, casino ah, uh, or any the so called ah uh, the shopping on the on board ah. Uh. Okay, and I, okay, this one I think it's just a it's just it's just it's just a normal detail telling you uh what is the current current revenue model. I mean, it's current uh, trend in the remunerable for this passenger ticket. So actually, um, starting, I mean, in short, the summary is for the next three years, this company, I think the for this passenger tickets is like roughly around six percent, six percent per year only, la. So uh, and then other revenue, other revenue, also indicate I think uh the most this company, I think the last the next three years ah. Uh, uh, this company also like I mean at most also uh, like also eight percent allowed for this revenue. Okay, this one is the revenue growth, and then uh, available passenger cruise days is uh is the how I mean is the how efficiency they pro the the this passenger carry was such a how many meaning each cruise carry how many days are in in the in the world in uh averagely and 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 their growth rate. So this one is also, I mean, it's like two point four percent average growth for the cruise days growing. So occupancy is is like this as as shown in the in the chart. Then the cost structure, actually twenty eight percent under commercial and transportation, ten percent under the onboard and under, and then forty percent under the the fuel, the oil, and oil yeah, fuel fuel is oil, oil costs, and the payroll seventy seventy percent. So is if you ask what is the differentiation, uh, um, first of all, actually, uh, according to the online experience and the review I read, so far they prefer the this this cruise compared to the number one cruise, which is the Carnival, because they like this uh they like this cruise about the innovation by introducing the new concept on his ship and continuously making improvement to its fit. And then they, I mean, this in short. This cruise has more activity than the, the other cruise. Okay. So uh, okay. and then if the if you want to uh significant reason to remember now is because or thought the revenue growth is is slowing down. Or, I mean not not slowing down, it's still growing, but just not the momentum momentum in double digit growth. But due to the re, the past uh they what is the program they launched out this double double program, the management actually uh uh managed to turn the profit margin from single digit to double digit meaning from single digit margin they turn to double digit it's, it's not the number it's the margin they managed to improve the margin so i think this one is going forward i think this one is uh it's not uh it's nothing so special or so exciting right? it's just a tap, tapping to the technology win or anything right? Is and, and then this one is, is actually just improve the efficiency of the check in and the and then the buy, buying ticket and inquiry on it. So industry tailwind, right? Actually, this one is a few regression in uh in two o two o. Actually, okay. In short, that this common uh they will in they want to uh for environmentally friendly. They want to reduce the pollution. So so far, this company has already uh. Obey, obey the regulation only, and then I do not see any expenses impact from from this regulation yet. Uh. Then then seasonality, uh, so cruise is seasonal. Uh, demand is strongest for cruise during the northern hemisphere. I mean, uh, so far by this cruise, right? Most of the people uh, uh go for this cruise for holiday is normally go to the Caribbean Sea and, or or they want to the winter season is during the Alaska. So for in terms of market and convention, right, the industry penetration rate, as you see in the chart, is also uh, from North, it's the highest in South, North America. Right? But the rise of Asian is also, I mean, in terms of revenue, most are in North America, but in terms of growth, right, most are in Asia Pacific. So the global cruise gas, as per right hand side, you can see the most still from the North America. And then the CAGR for Asia Pacific is going to up 25% per year. It means it's quite uh, very fast growing gas in Asian, Asian Pacific. Uh. 
So the top top competitor, as I say, the last the largest is the Carnival Group. Carnival Group actually has the market share of fifty percent. Then the next only the is the Royal Caribbean, but Carnival Group is not listed company. Then uh, the other thing is 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 uh, is, to, is to be considered is the because cruise ma is like an airline la. This one is cruise, so oil oil price essentially is comprised of twenty percent of the company cost. But uh, so far the oil price is in the downside la, compared to last decade. But it's any any rise of oil price in future right will I in will be impact the company additional two percent of the cost. So actually, management, I didn't. Uh, I mean, still not still not complete this this part. Uh, I I mean, one of the top key percent is this guy. This one is 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 Richard. Also same as our 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 friend Richard here. And uh, actually, and actually, this guy is actually uh seventy years seventy years old already. Yeah. I what I what I uh found it consider funny or or whatever. In the annual report, right? They I I don't know why they right. Uh, first time I see I read any what they say he had his wife Corinne has four children and seven grandchildren. I mean, what this this statement? Uh, what can bring this? Uh, what is the value of this statement? Uh? You tell me. You tell me how how many grandchildren you have, for what? Uh? To to make you trust me, lah. <laughs> this means that he got a lot of people to feed, so he must work hard. <laughs> And at the same time, he is uh how to say enjoying life la like you know, uh have a lot of time to relax, make a lot of children, make a lot of grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> oh, alternative way. Uh, means he can have very good productivity. Yeah. Okay, the guy top key person second in second in command is this. Just like as a group CEO, actually for under the each each of the cruise right, they have one CEO for the cruise one, and then this one is a group CEO, and then the second one this one is a group CFO, and then and then this this guy is actually uh since I mean since the beginning of the company that he already joined this joined in this company uh, he is not the founder but he has been the long serving this company for more than thirty years ah. Uh. Okay, for financial, I haven't, I haven't did yet. I think, I think, I think, I think this because the what what made me want to continue want to do right. I think is it's more it's more or less depending on how uh how am I I mean we are really interested to continue to do this company. Uh, but so but so far, if you if you say ask me the the future outlook for this company right. I can see it's, uh, this this three were so and steady. Uh. I think uh, that's that's the end of my presentation already. Okay. <clears throat> Any question? Um. With holiday businesses, huh? mm -hmm. I think there's a bit of uh, the risk would be kind of tied to economic growth and stability also. Uh. Yeah. Uh, so they are targeted uh, consumer uh, mostly like from which country and you know what are the, what are the roots of the holiday and do they create new roots from time to time? To they are... They are... I mean, if you want to ask me market, which kind of consumer, right? I think mm. so by far, I think mostly it's still in US. Uh, and if you, in terms of income category, right, I think at least upper middle to to really uh, upper class of person. Uh, I mean, because if you if you look at online, right, if you want to book this cruise, right, for like 10, 10 days or 14 days to to the Royal Cruise, uh, it's, like, oh, it's like almost 15, 15 K USD per person. Fifteen you I but I thought I thought I see this company in Singapore also, you know. And uh, the there are packages where it's actually quite down to earth also. Uh because this one yeah. the, the one I saw is the most luxury one. Uh. 
they, but they they have they do have the Asian. They are actively uh because that's why you asked me the root also right they they are also actively increase the root in Asian. I think the latest they increase like Japan, Hong Kong, or even to Australia and New Zealand. So it's tiered and tied to affordability of the targeted consumer, also, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a stupid question. Okay. Uh, could there be any possibility that the competitor can like hundred percent control the route, and then Royal Caribbean cannot penetrate into it? Mm. Some the example yeah. like they cannot go to Japan or they cannot go to uh, North America something like this. I don't think so. Because already no right. Usually it's all share one right. Yeah. Yeah. It's an uh, airline also. Okay. Just curious. No more question. Okay. Next. Okay. Uh, morning star. Make me excited a bit. Uh. I'm getting very sleepy. Uh. Who is doing morning star? Kwanya Annabelle. <clears throat> okay. Are then you ready for the morning star? No, uh, at least yes, something like this. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> How, actually, think about it, it's so weird, right? The name Morning Star, like morning, morning lah. Morning, you can see the star one, man. Oh yeah, but then why then? Can you answer? Uh, what what is the reason make you to choose this company in the first place? Uh, <laughs> no, not I choose one. <laughs> I huh? I like I just provided a list and then I sent to Annabelle. Hey, anyone you want? I I I I initially I suggested the kindergarten one. Remember last 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 video I was talking about the kindergarten one. Ah, then this one seems famous lah, so just choose morning star. <laughs> I I will do timer. Uh, I will time. Uh yes, timing already. Mm. Okay, proceed, proceed. <sighs> hey, why you skip? Huh? What's the two funds? Packers and when practice. <sighs> So familiar this game. 
Eh, hey, popular man this ETF? Popular. Ten minutes left. Ten minutes left. Yes, ten minutes left. Okay, so what do you think about company? Satan. Satan. Huh? 
It's a Firefox it's, sharing. It's a foreign foreign style, you know, almost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, share it. Um, Bazi from Three Folder. Can see that one. Where, that one. Over there. On the top there. Yeah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Hanya, you're really addicted to this, huh? What am I supposed to see? <laughs> I see nothing. I see man, 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 get your idea. I was like talking, talking. I rest. Hey, why no one talking? Waiting oh, for you. Oh, you were you, talking uh... actually. <laughs> You're supposed uh, to talk. Yeah, I, I did, but I crashed. Oh. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, you can see right now. You can see my screen right. Okay. Full okay. screen, please. Okay, so in terms of balance sheet. You can see that things are very nice, are very rosy one. Uh, the debt was all very little. Uh, they are in net cash position. Net debt to net T is negative one. Yeah, ROE twenty one percent. So okay uh, looks looks quite okay uh, actually. Actually, it looks quite good okay uh. mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, really. And then uh, oh. you go into here. Uh, yeah. you actually see. Huh? Well, can you can if I from my screen I I still see that the still not uh full screen, putting please. It. Full screen yes. Full screen. Uh, I'm in full screen already. But I don't know. Oh, ah. Uh. Wait up, wait up. <sighs> Ayah, maybe I shouldn't have used Firefox. Yeah. I think Google Google Chrome works well, ah. Uh. Google Chrome. <laughs> mm. oh. <laughs> One moment, please. Is Hajun humming that that familiar <laughs> Wolf Street song? Why are you wait? Why? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can see or not? I share my screen already. Okay. <laughs> can see or not? Uh, still can still, still cannot see the screen. By the way, the time passed. Uh, you still got five minutes left. <laughs> Why are we waiting? Why are we waiting? Why hey, wait, 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 wait. are we waiting? My Chrome not responding already. <laughs> Why um, are you Chrome? Why are you Chrome? Chrome? Hey, why Morning Star? Can I go Morning Star to crash? Huh? Stop opening so many parts website. Eh? You know, a lot of parts of website got a lot of the mining, Bitcoin mining software All right. behind the website. I'm back. Okay. 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 Another okay. screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I? okay, full screen now. Good. <laughs> so, uh, free cash flow wise, you can see over here at the beginning, uh, very negative because they uh, bought the pitch book. The, the company so they have been acquiring companies uh. basically uh if you can really see from the uh what Annabelle showed just now right you can see here uh, um most of their things are actually not really not really moving uh, actually the the organically one like monista.com premium membership all this uh I mean I mean they are slowly dying uh, but they are not dying uh, so don't know how to say <laughs> yeah but apparently the pitch book doing very well. Uh. It's been like growing, growing, growing until uh, if you see the overall revenue from Fishbook just now, it's about 91 million. So um, segmental wise, it's getting significant. Uh. But how they can grow so fast, I don't know. So someone need to find out. Anybody need to find out how they can grow so fast. Like why, why did people are buying? <clears throat> yeah. And then also in this company, it's natural that you have a lot of intangible assets uh, because of the uh, acquisition. So over here, 2016, you can see here, spike up. There's also bigger acquisition. As well as because they are own software. Let me see. Uh. Yeah, over here. Pitchbook data. 
So this one is getting very significant. They acquired in 2016. 4 million is the uh, revenue. And then become 99 million. So actually a bit, how to say, uh, a bit drastic uh, to me. <laughs> how, how can you go from 4 million to 99 million in like two years? Like what they do, uh, they eat drugs. Uh. So to me, like, to me, like, don't know why it grows so fast. Uh. Hmm? Correct. What they get, you know, uh, actually this type of company, right? What their strength, uh, their competitive advantage is actually uh, them integrating their in data, their existing data, integrating to a new uh, service or they're going to provide a new service. That means they integrate in be uh, between their data. Yeah, because they're having a lot, a lot, a lot of data. I mean, if you like, I mean, if you like uh, financial software, right? You can see another company called FastSet. Uh. That yes. one, I, didn't, I, I missed that one. I like that one more than Morning Star. Uh. FastSet Research, is it? Uh. Yeah, I did a comparison for it also. Yeah, so, um, okay, let's get some facts right first. Uh. License based, so mostly Morning Star is actually based on license. And then uh, transaction based, you don't need to see. Uh. Then asset base is the ma asset management, just on the ETF and uh, the all those others. Uh, they, they have a, a AUM. Uh. So, okay, this is this. Okay, this is FactSet. Uh. FactSet is here, Thomson Reuters. But I believe Thomson Reuters have other things. Uh. That's why the number is a bit different. You know, Thomson Reuters is more toward uh, multimedia. Uh. Uh, uh. I think they also have their the research thing, right? Yeah, but it's only comprised of little part only. Oh, okay. Um, fact set, uh, quite. I mean, the number is actually quite similar to Morningstar. It's just that fact set is bigger than Morningstar. Fact set is about, uh, ten point five billion, uh, in terms of market cap, uh. not not actually almost there, uh. They are both of them are almost there. But in terms of growth rate, uh, fact set is actually better. In terms of PE, also fact set lower than Morningstar. Um, let me see anything to highlight, uh. Yeah, fact set has an ROE of forty nine percent, uh. Okay, this one I don't know how how it come, uh. I, you know. Okay, like, ironically, this data I get for fact set is from Morningstar, la, so. <laughs> yeah. Mm, anything else, ah? Uh, need to highlight, uh? Actually, technically, all this company, ah, uh, uh, their number are very nice one. You see, all very nice one. The only thing that's like off is the, probably the, the, uh, the, the way, the, how they're going to expand their EPS or how they're going to expand their PE. <laughs> <laughs> Which comes back to these two things. Uh. So, uh, you done already or still question and Q&A now? Yeah, I think I done already, yeah. Okay. Done already, yeah. Uh, has the pitch book part been already reflected in the share price? Uh? Has the pitch book part have reflected in the share price? Uh? I believe so. Uh. But, it's, but let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh. Pitch book. Increase hundred over percent. Can you see in the chart? Bit of. You're seeing this one, ah? Uh? Wait, ah, uh, let me find. Wait, ah. Uh. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Twenty sixteen, four million. Okay, 2017, they add 60 million. 60 million, 2017. Okay. And then let me go to their ratio. Huh? Revenue, 2017, add 60 million. But net profit after tax drop. Okay. Okay, this one I don't know why. Huh? I need to find out. Huh? Give me a bit of time. Huh? But the fact that they are over 30 over PE and they have been emphasizing a lot of facts that um what's the uh Annabelle, what's the projection uh, for facts set? Eh, sorry, not facts set for uh, for pitch book. Did they measure anything? Hi. You know, last time I shared with you guys one company called Crunchbase, right? One website. Yeah, yes. yeah, I saw, I saw. So, I was subscribed to their. Essentially, they are doing the same thing, right? Like... 
So Crunchbase has all companies, including private companies, because this page four is on private equity, venture yeah. capital. Richard, I, have, Richard, I have a question. How does people like Crunchbase get their data? Hmm, very good question. Also, not very clear. Did but I think there are uh, several, there are several data entry points. I can't remember. I, I mean, I do re remember that Crunchbase has not only just Crunchbase itself. That means there are other uh -huh. providers that are providing the data to them. That means they have other vendors uh, that they are paying. Yeah, correct. Huh. Buying data. Because eventually all this is uh, it's, uh, still manually key in, uh, mm. in some form or another. Mm. Unlike list listed companies, which is already publicly available data. So, yeah. But most of the, okay, most of the research company I've, uh, I see online um, based on the competitors, most of the companies are private, like Bloomberg. Um, Bloomberg is private, and then still one more. Uh, it's, it's, a game, it's a game of free data. La. Actually, yeah. to be honest, right, if you look at what Morningstar is doing, uh, it's quite uh, reactive rather than proactive. Uh. They, yeah, they don't seem to lead, right? Like, oh. the, the services that you say the two main new products that they're coming out this uh, pitch book and one more is some kind of advisor thing right it's already in the market for at least five or ten years already and only they start to come up because it's getting popular mm. a bit, a bit mm. Moro, Moro uh, so you know when you know when I see especially those uh chairman or CEO, they, every time the only thing they emphasize is culture one, uh, means there's nothing <laughs> else to emphasize. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else to talk about, right? Really, this know, is like... my thing. Seriously, I'm not, I'm not bluffing, but <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like I read through, right? If they only can talk about their culture is strong, right? Means they have nothing else left to talk about, you know? It's not like, wow, my product is very good, my business is so-and-so. It's -so. engine is super... Okay, but uh, something that's uh, interesting, something that's interesting, uh, Morningstar, if you go to their website, you we are buying the, when you subscribe to them, we are buying the, 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 the analysis, right? Rather than actually, the... Actually, I am, I am a subscriber for oh. free one. For free? Okay. I managed to get free subscriber for life. Huh? Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hacker thing, right? Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but hey, your point is it related? Is, uh, is it related I mean, to your dark days selling DVD? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, so if you ask me, I think Morningstar is uh one of the uh, another things for Morningstar right, is the B two B uh, they actually provide the financial data to Guru Focus and Bloomberg and Faxet one. Oh yeah. wait wait wait, they sell to Faxet ah? Uh? Uh, wait what? The one makes sense. Uh. Then, then Morningstar get it from who? Okay, from who? Morningstar get the data from who? And a report. Uh. No, uh, Morningstar is the first, it's a tier one. They, they on compute the, the data. They oh. Hey, why are they so lousy, man? They, they get the data, <laughs> then they feed the data to FactSet, then FactSet grow larger than them. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Cannot be right. So weird. <clears throat> to focus on upstream already. Okay, any questions? I'm going to write it down. Then uh, I'm going to explore more. So one is 2017, why revenue, uh, sorry, why revenue up, profit down. No question. Um, Next up. Mm. This type of company uh, really can can 
can grow lah. Maybe not not significant lah. Actually, if you look at the revenue increase, it's quite significant. But... <laughs> this one over here. No, not that much. Never mind that. Yeah. From eight hundred to nine hundred, you add another hundred, hundred mil. Oh, this is million, by the way. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Close your screen. Okay. 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 Uh, suddenly you tell me that you didn't listen any part. Okay. Okay. Uh, By the legendary. Okay. Okay. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm. So what I'm gonna do different from what uh, is supposedly the the presentation that that Adrian compiled is I'm gonna do some form of super summaries instead of going through all the content. Um, do you want me to present in, in terms of I'm trying to sell the company or should I just present in terms of factually talking about it? Which one? Factually talking. Factually, factually means factual. no hype. Okay, no hype. Man. Okay. Uh, so, factual, I... will be, okay. Hmm? factual will be, okay, essentially, this so-called industry is so-called riding the digital trend, okay, uh, which means it's uh, reducing cost of HR manpower and then a lot of automation, which means less error-prone uh, work, uh, increased productivity and lower cost. And it so-called allows HR manpower people to focus on culture building, which uh, Morningstar is trying to do and uh, nurturing of talent instead of uh, paperwork lah. Okay? okay so <clears throat> obviously being digital means i can see things 24 7 uh, which is also very good for those micromanaging people like Huan yang to you know control the employees all the time uh, then yeah. obviously as uh, with data it also allows macro managing of the entire company whereby you can <clears throat> based on certain uh, data points you can decide whether to do maybe give bonus or something like that okay okay so uh according to this company it's already a 30 year old company so i assume yeah, there's okay. a lot of limited experience and what they emphasize is mainly this uh, all in one app mm, yeah. <clears throat> okay so there are core metrics hey wait adrian are you also going to present later um not really uh, because i also starting halfway uh. oh, okay okay so the core metrics is this fancy annual revenue retention rate which uh, i have no idea what's so important about this but i think it means uh they find a new customer and they stay on uh. Actually, this this retention rate, uh, so this, the, mm. this retention rate is quite important in variation. Okay, but the, but the point is, this retention rate, I know it's important, especially for so called SaaS companies lah. Because you're yeah. a subscriber ma. you're mm -hmm. looking for retention ma. Uh, but mm. this year and last year and the future year one, is not is not gonna be a. Uh, trend kind of thing so how can you value based on this i don't believe it's a very strong indicator for valuation lah, to be honest you get what i mean yeah ah okay uh okay next risk part so uh to me this is a very fragmented industry okay and then hr very important is this is a very country specific business because of all the regulation, law, compliance, and everything. So uh, <clears throat> usually there are those HR companies that try to... Uh, HR software 
that try to cater for multiple countries, for example, Malaysia and Singapore ones, those that I'm aware of, uh, they tend to be very bloated because certain things in Singapore, for example, uh, Malaysia don't have. So or Malaysia don't have, then Singapore have whatever. So uh, actually focusing on one specific country is actually a, probably a good thing. <clears throat> uh, of course, however, Paycom, if not mistaken, is... Uh, supposedly aiming to be global so i'm not sure i haven't tested the software and do start but but yeah um, something very critical to me is i realized in their annual report uh, they're emphasizing that they're very proud of this so-called buyback to me this is uh, extreme rate yeah. yes share buyback so why, uh? why are they trying to be proud of this i don't really get it <coughs> The first thing in the annual report, you really tell them if you want to. Ah, uh, never mind lah. You don't need to see. If I just pass by it. Yeah, because uh, if if you are in a growing company, why you buy there? Yeah, no. Exactly. So, uh, never mind. Later, then we see the annual report. Okay. Ah, uh, then uh, required to consistently adapt to changing regulation. This one, obviously lah. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, HR also. Uh, more often than not, requires some kind of customization one. Uh, for every company is slightly different. So there will definitely be some kind of customization, which means there will definitely be some kind of, uh, what do you call, uh, employee cost, software cost, lah, development cost, as compared to platforms like, for example, Facebook, which is standard. Nobody can modify to their own preference. Uh, this one is higher cost, lah. Okay, <clears throat> and then in their annual report, right, very interesting, they emphasize that their growth uh, is called, uh, they, they call it completed their construction of 250 square feet, I don't know how many acres of HQ. So to me, their so-called growth is trying to boost their ego or what? I don't understand. Uh, this is one thing. And of, of course, of course, wait, uh, of course, it's also very highly dependent on the sales team. Uh, okay. Then also is uh, also very dependent on their customer care staff. And then the tech team is very focused, is focused at these two places, like Texas and uh, Oklahoma, which they claim to have high quality talent and at lower cost. But <clears throat> if you're a tech company, right? Are you actually trying to overemphasize on cutting costs on your employment? I mean, especially if they are doing all this uh, R&D and software development, rather than trying to recruit top talent in Silicon Valley and paying more for quality uh, software developer, this one is a very funny question. Lah. Okay. So, because this is a tech company, ma, they, are not, they are not Warren Buffett. Ma. So, hiding in a small kampong doesn't make sense. Lah. Okay, <laughs> it really doesn't make sense. This one's very funny. So, okay, uh, data leaks from hacks and privacy. Obviously, this one is also a very big risk to them. Okay, next. Okay, growth driver. Now, I'm going to split growth driver to two levels. Uh, first, uh, obvious ones will be ability to tap, tap data across. Oh, shit. I, I might need a little bit more time uh, because I'm going through. Am I? I'll go through faster. Uh, data across companies. So this one means they can actually sell data if they want to. Uh, whether they are legally allowed to or not, I don't know. Next, they are targeting so-called 50 to 2,000 employee size, and now they are scaling up. Okay. Uh, next, they are obviously tapping into the tech savvy millionaire workforce, which prefers... Okay. Prefer beautiful and intuitive GUI, graphic user interface, within an app rather than direct human to human experience. You know, right? Millennial now, they don't like to talk to people, one. they like to talk to their phone. So, this one is very good. Okay. Uh, providing more solution for existing customer so they can upsell. Lah. Now, level two growth driver that I can sense is number one, they have this pay comp pay means they pay the salary from their app itself so if if i think of it is this way they can 
there is definitely some kind of transition of the money in between the company to paycom and paycom to the uh, employees. Employee. So this period of transition, if it amounts to big amount, right, and then if it's going to be stored for, let's say, just two or three days, right, Broding it's going to be, yes, there is an interest-free float. Lah. Okay. Uh, next. Potential expansion to cover accounting software solution and become all rounder back office tool. This one also very important. As a peer, uh, pro. Yes, correct. So uh, the third one, which is I feel this is very interesting. They uh, uh, they have these modules where they do e learning and training modules to train up employees for new skill sets on demand. This one very very good. I feel quite unique. Not everyone is doing it. So okay. uh. Do, do they have access to blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, hard to penetrate. Why am I writing? Yeah, it's a uh, okay, this is, a, this is a question I need to find out. Okay, this one I don't know yet. Do they have something that other people cannot do? Uh, means, you know, going through to uh, IRS and etc. But I don't think it's very unique. Okay, haven't used their software, but I assume they also provide API and encourage third-party apps to connect. So this one is very important, third-party. Just remember this word, third-party app. Okay, such software are often also very sticky. Software providers also often make it more difficult to export and transfer data. Okay, means uh, they Switching have to high. change up. Yeah, sticky. Lah. Uh, the more products a customer use, the more lazy uh, okay. I, as a business owner, will want to change the platform. So... Uh, when they can provide certain value-add solutions that other providers don't, then uh, yeah, this is what they do, like, all in one, which means it's like a Netflix for HR app. Okay? Okay. Bigger companies tend to rely on data analytics and business intelligence, these two keywords. Big companies always want to use all these fancy words, so uh, they can, uh, how to say, I, I, I don't know what's the word to use now, but basically using this data, they can make some certain decisions from top level management. Okay. So this one, skip. Products, please just read online. The main ones are the ones I'm highlighting. Okay. Paycom pay. Okay. Paycom learning. So this one, very interesting. Gov government compliance and just now that one, the Paycom pay. Uh, pay, pay. Uh, <clears throat> Mm, yeah, they are obviously very sticky. Okay. Uh, obvious competitors. So I need the numbers fella to actually do this comparison and make sure they uh, compare, especially with this kind of company's work day. Yeah, okay. because I also look through this competitor, right? Uh, actually, all the all the competitors are same same height, but together together the share price, all the same performance together, same one. Or? So I suspect Paycom mm. is just it's only just catching the tailwind only, but it's not it's not like because of uniqueness of its business. Right? The 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 additional problem about Paycom, right, is if you look at the interface, right, it's very normal, you know. It's uh -huh. not very not those high end kind of app lah. So okay. anyway, HR is also kind of very low end uh, processing thing. Uh, but if you look at others providers like Workday or or I don't know what else other names lah, uh, maybe Microsoft. They are their ones are actually quite top notch already. And then furthermore, you imagine Microsoft you can integrate with Office and everything. So, uh, yeah, uh, important to compare. Lah. Uh, okay. Then this one, I think you need to tell me later. What is this question you're trying to ask? I don't understand. Uh, providing HR software solutions that charge in recurring self income basis dependent on sales team. Okay, so my question was, how are the sales team compensation structure? Are they employees or agents? Which I dig through the annual report. Uh, they are essentially they recruit. Okay, keywords they recruit. Okay, they have forty nine teams, and then they go through this course. And then through this cost, they will um, sell. So when they sell, uh, when they stay for one month, they get commission. commission. And then if they do something else, they buy another app or what, then I get another commission. How much is the commission? I don't know. Need to check. Uh, and then obviously they do online marketing. You know, you see search engine marketing and all this uh, means 
they rely a lot of all this uh, online marketing. Lah. So maybe Huan Yang, you can try and target them. Lah. Uh, they also, basically, I know this from what is written and from what my experience with other HR uh, software providers, they're very dependent on the sales team lah, because this one really is kind of B2B. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, right. uh, <clears throat> okay. So the rest actually I basically skip. So my question to Terry in terms of numbers is, is the share price driven by buyback or real growth? That's it. Next. Uh, okay. 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 Oh, my okay. Can see my screen, right? No. Hello? Not yet. Not yet. No. 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 <laughs> Can you Any see? Any problem again, Terry? Might uh, might work. Last time, last time change right now. Need change. Cam, 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 camera spoil. <laughs> <laughs> hey Darren, send send Terry a laptop lah. Okay now can I? Okay now, okay, now. okay okay okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, when I try to file a structure, I I I try a lot of time to find your subsidiary. Eventually, I found there's only five. And first of all, I study. Ah, uh, correct me if my wrong. I don't find there's very clear structure and uh, uh distinction between all these subsidiary. So this is what I'm able to get. Okay, in terms of in terms of their shareholding, right? There are two. Okay, first institutions, very large uh, part of it come from the institutional shareholding. The top five is on this five. Uh, the first one is already have uh, around seven to eight percent of the total of the shareholding. Then followed by the remaining four. All oh, this is a uh, very institutional wow. shareholding. Yes, what? Right. Okay, continue. Ah, so uh, luckily the founder is still holding the share. Okay, so it's about seven to eight. Anyhow, plus minus we together we bought a director. Total of them, the total shareholding is actually less than 12%. Not even, not even 12. So, and based on what I found uh, on the web page there, right? Uh, recently there's a lot, starting from this few years, there are a lot of sell order coming from the uh, not only from the management and also from the director itself. So even CEO, CFO, all these CIO is the selling their so-called share piece by piece. But it's, it's not. Right but there. then they doing it's not a lot, lot Yes, it's not a lot, but they're still self selling one. There's no buying; they're just selling. <laughs> CEO, <laughs> like they, sell, right? they sell back to the company. Yeah. They sell and then they do share buyback. What the fuck? <laughs> okay all right so next okay, interesting. Okay. now now the whole board of director structure right there are seven of them out of seven there's oh, only okay. one which is actually working which is the founder itself the remaining Sales six person. is yeah yes the remaining six six percent it just uh, come to attend the meeting only lah. so the top part is the founder which i found that is quite i don't know it's quite can use the quite inspiring word or what because based on what they describe this guy he claimed that uh he has already start to found this company starting 1988 so mean to say if i do the calculation he's uh, supposed to be found this company starting around seven uh 17 or 18 years old somewhere around these years which i found doesn't really make sense right? <laughs> he's the same person uh, very Come uh, on, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyhow, I also can't, can't really figure out how can this person, he founded this company at such a young age and somehow he can manage to uh, study in a university and complete a bachelor for this kind of degree. Don't really make sense. Uh. Okay. Bachelor of journalism. Uh. Lying, no need to attend class, man. <laughs> Are you sure? Serious. Journalism, like... Take picture, go out, take picture, submit assignment. 
Di sini dia tak isi lah. Wah, panjang ke? <laughs> mass count. Mass count should be easier. Mass count should be easier. I have fun uh-huh. to do that for. Uh-huh. Compared to engineering, right? Engineering very hard, right? You want to say? Not, not really. Uh, no lah. I mean, this this guy able, wah, well, he has the capacity to create pay comp. Hmm. Yes, but eventually he before that he worked for others while doing the kind of salesman. Then eventually he found this kind of company. He was a salesman bef- even younger, is it? Yes. Holy crap, this guy. But based on number, it doesn't make sense. Uh, based on the the number of age that he claimed that he has been starting to have work on. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because they claim that this company has already been is a three decade company. Uh, remember, uh, if you. You, if you're going back to here, it's around 70 to 18 years old when you start to found this company. That's, that's it. And for the remand, okay, because he's the only one in the board of director who work in this company, so the remaining one is eventually all the management. So how I mentioned, I just forget about the all this uh, CFO, la, CEO, I just focus on the CIO. Um, eventually, all this kind of the management, their age is between 45 to 55 years old, this kind of range. And I will see that this, uh, this guy still is actually quite a very typical kind of person who is uh, eventually start working, okay, as a very, very humble beginning engineer, then become senior consultant and manager, then eventually become a director before he joined this uh, company. So this is what I see. But eventually he, I found that this company is uh, quite like to hire the, the person as a locally uh, instead of from other states. This is one of the information that I found, which is matched to what they are uh, just saying. Uh, they like to hire local talent. Okay. And okay, director Brian from company transition. I don't I don't find any of this because there is a reason behind if you're looking on the figure, they are holding quite a number of the funding from the user. Okay. So this is uh in terms of their compensations. Like what I say, only one person from the board of director is working. The remaining six is uh, served as not executive. So actually, I do sum up the management fees, everything as well. Sum up everything, 11 of them, they are percentage of the compensation compared to the, uh, even I go to the bottom line, which is only about 3.66%. Wow, quite yes. Quite Okay, all right. So... If we let's go to the numbers, ah. Uh. Okay, if you see these numbers, I would say that this company is really growing. For your information, this company is listed starting uh 2014. So eventually 2011, 12, and 13, it just served as a part of uh, the first three years because they start to uh, listed uh in the New York Stock Exchange. So eventually we have the real data itself is only five years. The three years is just a pre pre data before they start to have a listed. Eventually, if you see all this figure, this company is really growing. It just uh in four to five years times, the number of size that they grow is can they already grow in terms of tenfold. So if you really look at the, all this figure, uh, not only their revenue, profit, uh eventually all this like uh, all this kind of the uh, how to say the asset also growing very fast. The only thing that I don't understand is starting from 2016, three years back, they start to have uh, expanding their office. Every almost area that's uh, starting from 2016, they're spending around 45 to 46 million just to buy the new space for the uh, and expanding their office, followed by 2017 and 2018 around more than 50 million has been spent just to buy the space and also expanding their office this is what i found starting from two years back okay so this is one of them eventually for my questions is uh okay one good thing i found about this company is their ccc is always in negative position but eventually they have the their number is start detroit starting from few years back even just starting from uh, how to say oh, not this rate even starting from 30 over days now they already eventually reduced to uh or almost to 20 days yeah 
they receive the cash before they, they start to operating their, their, their real business, but the number is actually deteriorating. This is what they found. Other than this, one more thing that I found is that, um, sorry, this is not marketer security. This is actually fun, the, the, their fund holding in terms of for their user. They are actually holding quite a number, significant fund in terms of user. The, re the reason uh, two to three years time, they're already holding more than almost 1,000 million kind of USD. It's very a uh, huge amount compared to their current cash holding in hand. So the question is raising, uh, is uh, wondering me now is that what are they actually going to do with, with this kind of size of the fund? I don't think they will just, uh, just temporarily park the fund and then just do nothing about it. Uh, okay, I think that's all. So I think I need to uh, I need to figure out more to answer Richard in terms of two questions just now. One of is that uh, they do declare a share buyback, uh, but I need to dig more info that uh, is the share buyback is the one that boosts up their share price. This is the first, and then so the second thing is I also uh, haven't added in their peer comparison yet aside for this company. Questions. <clears throat> Adrian, you got a question? Ah? I think he got a lot. I think he got toilet. Okay. Uh, sorry, this Terry. Uh -huh. This marketable securities is what already? Uh? No, 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 no. This one is fun. If you, sorry, let me open the, let me open the, this one, huh? Adrian might got problem. Oh. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Uh, go to the asset. If you see, it is basically that claim as a current asset before funds held for clients. So Fund is this is the okay. float? Is it? Is this the float that I'm talking about? Uh, they didn't describe uh the further details part of this. Current assets before they are becoming funds. No, 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 no. So, no, uh, no, no. So, no sorry. It is a fund house for clients. Yeah, la, yes. okay. La. This is the correct. La. This is the the e wallet the thing. Float, la. La. Uh, the float. La. That's okay. exactly what I expect. La. They should have some kind of float one. Mm. So, this is in terms of dollars or in terms of millions? Million. Uh, this one is uh, if you just look on my figure, my figure is already show that this one is is in uh mi million, million, million. Meaning to say they already exited one thousand million starting two thousand and seventeen. Of course, mm. last year they, they start to reduce a bit lah, uh, almost yeah, yeah, near yeah. to one thousand. Uh, can you go back to the end report again? Yes. Um, interesting. The balance sheet is in thousand. It's oh in thousand, yes. Uh. So it's, it's actually ninety six million. Yes. No, 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 900, oh, wow. 900 and 967 million. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, la, correct. La, 967 uh, correct, million. Correct, correct. Okay, I was looking at the wrong number. Okay. Uh, so, so if you see, uh, if you see, uh, if they just, they just have this fund health for client, it's already exceeded any number that they have in their uh, set already. <coughs> but I don't think they are legally allowed to use the money, right? Yeah, hmm. use the money. La. So either they can put it in terms of some kind of a fixed deposit or something. So you probably can see the numbers, any deposit that they are putting or not. Yeah, man. Or, I thought usually this type of money can need to put in trust one. Uh, depends. Ah. Depends. Because they might have a contractual basis to the to Second their video. clients saying that it's interest-free, but that doesn't mean they can't do anything to the money. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but basically, but basically, I believe that this uh, over nine hundred million is not a small number. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. you you can do it yes. with the non. It's not a small number. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Anyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. 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 Finally. Finally. Just, 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 just what I want to ask this. This company is a software company. Why? Why got inventory? Uh? Why is the inventory? Uh? 
The inventory part is it? Ah. Chairs, table. No, no chairs. Uh, that is capex, ma. No, I mean this one is the. Uh, you are talking about just inventory itself, right? Yes. No, just the inventory itself is uh. Let's see. Uh, Ooh, this okay. one is. No, this no, one. No, is, no, no, no. No, the, the, no, this this one is uh set. Say one hundred and ninety seven thousand. Not even one. You almost close to zero point zero point eight million. Oh, I know already. I know. I know coffee. Ah. No, 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 no. Uh, because they need to sell certain hardware, one, ma. Okay. Uh, hardware for software. Hardware for the sensor, like the you know, you tap your card on the door, and then you will oh. auto clock. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Probably those are inventory, lah. Um, but surprisingly, their goodwill is they didn't acquire mm. other company. Uh. their goodwill just steady and continue you know, to go yeah, down here. Uh. Just, just, mm. just, just steady over there. I think not. not I think I think that is not goodwill, right? It's the good software and patent whole whole things, right? I saw in the asset got goodwill or okay. intangible, uh, maybe. Is it intangible, Terry? Terry. Let's see, ah, uh. what's this one? Ah, it's good view. Ah, it's a good view. It's a good view. Mainly good view. Mainly good view. It's a it's a it's a good view. Hmm. Intangible okay. only like seven hundred something only. Yes. Okay. It's quite a quite a clean company, lah. Right. Mm. Looks like. <laughs> Looks, <laughs> Looks clean. Like. Looks clean. And then the I think it's mainly the trick of if if they have a very good C CFO, how they can allocate that one billion to do something, lah. Aha, uh -huh, that is. Can they can they allocate? Can they not? use or not? Don't know lah. But <laughs> if I'm the CFO, I will try and. I put out already. Is it? <laughs> like they they are doing something one. They they buy back and then they they sell the shares ah. They, 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 buy, they buy they buy back at what kind of P ratio ah? <clears throat> uh, this one I will need to dig out for the first. What kind of what kind of price they are actually buy buying back? Even they buy back also, they cannot use the the fund to buy back one. <laughs> investor fund, we invest our own company. But they, I mean, I mean, they quite a rich, rich cash flow, right? I mean, in the last two years, they already turned into positive cash flow already. If you're talking about just a cash flow itself, yes. So I think the main question will be really uh whether you feel this company has a lot more growth runway to go or not long. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. If you really compare this this kind of company, it's already uh, have a very significant growth over the just few years. Just few years only. So whether they still can grow or not some more, I guess. And then whether they are only restricted to only US or they can basically scale globally. That's very important uh, for a tech company. Yeah. Because from what I read from their websites and everything, I think they are mainly focused on US only. So, interesting company. Mm -hmm. Good. You, Adrian, you got, you got, you got any any other things to comment before it seems like you have also studied on this company actually for me it's more or like it's, I, I don't know how how good is the software but. i mean it's <clears throat> like, if you are compare because i like, if you say the peers are uh, all the peers as i say another place is called uh mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, in and also in duke and then play chat and also the other one ultimate software all are all also claim themselves also, 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 uh, really good HCM software. Oh. But which one? I mean, what what are the differences between this all this company, all this software? So I I think right mm -hmm. among them, I think you, we need to check is whether the rest have all those extra extra stuff like, for example, the the payroll one, automatic payroll one, and then also the e learning one. Because the rest, right? usually in a HR or payroll software is quite standard one is you need to comply to government you need to have clocking all this is quite standard stuff it's not hard to program uh, to be honest but they do the e-learning one which uh, very obviously 
it's makes it makes much more sense compared to just now Hongkets company to mm-hmm. integrate it directly inside their HR one. So yeah. uh, quite good, no? I feel this is quite good, no? Quite smart, lah. I mean, quite yeah. Smart. Because HR usually is also the, the learning one. Uh. Yeah, because you some employees, you know, they might not be usually they are not suited for their certain uh, certain department, then they need to change department. Mama. It's very common one. So when they change, they need to do some training, which if the software is able to provide the training on the platform itself, you actually save a lot of cost. Lah. So mm, so then then also very obvious is because of their all these combination, all these companies have to use their payroll and there is a float. So this float very beautiful. I just don't know what they're going to do with it. So so far, what, what is the company retention rate? Uh? They say what? 92%? What? 92. Wow, quite high. Uh. It's quite, I mean, you know, if you're a HR company and then you are you have a very strong sales team, you're Customer retention should be quite strong one, but <clears throat> yep. Some more if the services and I mean mainly is the the solutions that they provide is quite useful. And then like I said, you usually will be lazy to change really. So normally once you can really acquire and convert. The one more thing is most of the companies I believe lah, that they are using this software one, usually they convert from another company one. But this also comes to the problem of competitor, right? So they might yes. change so, if the cost become cheaper. Uh, yeah, oh, exactly. Oh. So so there is also one part where there must be uh that means their pricing cannot be very they don't have a strong mode in terms of pricing one. Uh, that's for sure. Competition. Is, compared to the if you want to compete for other pricing also mm-hmm. important. Uh. Uh, but another point is whether will the HR willing to change or not? Because it will be so, very, very big changes. Once so that's why I say this company is very dependent on the sales people. Very, very dependent. So if your sales team is strong and then they keep conquering, I mean, they, you know, they go yam cha with all the HR people and then they lunch at them, you know, buy them some, some telephone, bribe them a little bit. Uh, because then you another can't. point is that, like, uh, a problem of sourcing new business. Because they say this kind of company, right? when you already have existing client and if they have no issue using your platform, unlikely they will change. Am I right? They will keep upselling. Oh, that's, what, if, that's what I recall. Oh, they, ah. I read. Once in a while, they will follow up and then ask you, how is it? Then after that, upsell you some more yeah. product one. So I would say to a point, there might be limited new opportunity for sales. Yeah, unless they grow globally. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So this is why I don't know whether the growth is already factored in or not. What's the PE? Uh? The PE? Uh? Uh, 86. 86 or? 86. Uh, actually, oh. for, for this company, right, PE is not... Uh, this kind of sex, sex model, uh, PE is not... Uh, it's not the, the variation to... to, to so be focused on so be focused on cash flow uh, for for what I say. I think I think uh Terry can if you got show uh, can you show me what is the current price to cash flow? Uh? Price to cash flow. Uh. Uh, okay, hold on uh, in, 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 in which of your this one price over cash flow? Uh. cash flow is it? Yes. Yeah. I mean price, it's, no it's, price over free cash flow, is it? Uh, I mean, the CFO price of CFO is already 1.25. I mean, oh. it's already this low. Uh. Operating. Uh. Hey, can it be this low or not? I, I don't believe that. One year, I can <laughs> on, on back my cash flow already. Uh. My two there, lor. Yeah, lor. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> hey, is that hey. uh, really? Uh, you, 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 do you, I mean, do you really come com- com- correctly? Uh? Let me see. Uh. I mean, but but if you see the, if I see my PE is already very high, you know, you say you just now, you're based on the latest one, PE is already 86, but mine is uh, nine, it's 98 already. Because this one is based on the statement, right? Yes, yes, I'm based on the uh, statement. Not on the, not on the market one, man. Hmm. Your, your CFO, you got put CFO per share, not? Yeah. <coughs> hey. so this one is share price, man. See. 
Share price hey. is the same, uh, CFO. Terry, Terry, I, I just checked from Monisa, price to cash flow is 65. Uh. 65? Oh, uh. 65. Oh. 65. Lose a walk. Okay, okay. So, so this is why I need Means to you take market cap la, over, over CFO. Yeah, okay. Hey, hold on, uh, hold on. Uh. Hey, by, by the way, this one so, so far, CFO is uh, per share basis or what? Per share basis. Per share basis. Oh, okay. This one I didn't oh, like. Oh, you it. take market cap. Well, I, if, ah. if, 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 if I buy, <laughs> if I buy based on your one point two five, then I, then I, then I tell <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. This one, man. One point two five becomes sixty five. <laughs> but still, yeah. it's uh, yeah, la. Okay, okay, okay. Great. Um, interesting company, lah. Interesting company. Mm. Yes, in the same, but one question like Richard Watch is, is highlighting uh, can the this kind of so called growth can be still sustainable in coming just next few years? So you need to find out. Uh, I don't know from your numbers whether you can find out is their market share in actually actually it's supposed to be my side uh, industry. Is the market share among the whole US? Uh? Okay. Actually, okay. Yeah, how's their growth rate right again? So you mean in the growth rate in terms of um, segments, uh. in terms of revenue, uh. no, is it, if you're talking budget in terms of revenue, they are, they are three, I mean, above is six percent. Uh. No, oh. this is this is just uh, up to three years, okay, uh. only three years, that is three years, okay, ma. Even before that, also lose quite a lot uh, from 2011, also a lot. Uh. No, but if, no, but if you're referring to the moment they start to list it, they just they just have uh, over 100 of the million. Mm. Now is now is already times hey, every year. Wow. I mean, this one goal ref has to come up. I think if in in turn of you want to forecast the variation, right? We have to see what one is retention rate, another one is number of new customer coming in every year. Mm. Then 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 from there you multiply the retention rate, then multiply the your 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 EBIT. Then convert into cash flow. Then only you can see your price to your price to cash flow in four forecasted price to cash flow. I believe all this information quite limited to Gary. And and all this information is historical should, information. Uh, yeah, it should be. I think it's PNC. Mm-hmm. Oh, yo, MTL lo way faster, faster lo. You have to also remember. Uh, like I said uh, many times already, this is very dependent on the sales team la. So imagine the founder suddenly stroke and die. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, this guy. So oh, this, this guy. Okay, actually, I wanna say is based on what he's writing and look at his face, right? Does he look a little bit like a Dan Lok mixed with Tony Robbins kind of face? Ah? What the? <laughs> <laughs> so if if he's not in this paycom company, right? Do you think he's going out and giving talk one like Jordan Belfort does have talk one? <laughs> Right now, right now. If you think about it, think about it. Salesperson, what mm. do they normally do? They go sell, right? They bullshit their way through la. <laughs> so so but somehow or another this guy managed to find I mean to create this paycom. Not bad, la, right? But mm. then it's also very suit for his niche because this really because I have uh, friends that is also doing this HR uh, software one in Malaysia and then he's Basically, go. They have to every day go around and canvas for sales because you you just do marketing. People won't walk in my man. This something rarely they walk in. Man. So you actually need to really keep doing sales, 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 and keep selling one. And and instead, the software is not as important as the selling. So yeah, this is the sales team very important, uh, Seriously. But usually, this type of software there's a stickiness, right? That means people don't tend to change. Just imagine if another company sales team come and kill you over there. Employee retention rate. You get what I mean? Now? So now this you just imagine, okay, maybe you don't have experience, but if you're a company inside a company, they are purchasers. So you know the, the thing about purchasers is all these people they, that are vendors. they yeah, they will keep yeah, trying yeah. to uh, bribe them to <laughs> buy their product one. So same thing for HR, long. HR, even though you see like nothing to do, actually a lot of, a lot of funny things, on. So yeah, if I, but anyway, he's only forty eight. So, one stroke, lah, stroke, ayo. 
，系，半路，铁铁鱼呢个人个人个人，即系攞啲 drink 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 whiskey， 我谂我说。Yeah, maybe you need to do a bit a bit more background about this guy 啦。This guy. <laughs> okay. Okay, lah. I think that's about it, lah. Any other question? No. No. Okay. So, uh, you're supposed to dig more information and then present again, right? Yes, correct.、Mm. Okay. So, uh, we will catch up again next week or next next week. Next next week. Okay. Bye. Next week. Bye bye. Timing is good. Okay. Good night. Good night.